you ever want to see what goes on inside of a hard disk when it's operating? <laughs> I always wanted to do this, so um, got this old IDE drive, can't use it anymore. It's 160 gigs, kind of obsolete, but uh, before we get started, let's do the usual disclaimer. I don't advise doing this at home, running these things open. Uh, there's many reasons why, but a couple of them are this thing moves at high speeds. It can grab you, hurt you. Uh, the discs have been made out of glass and they've used toxic chemicals. You can break them and you can throw toxic chemicals around uh, and then there's sharp glass flying. So uh, yeah, I just don't advise doing it for many reasons. So let's take a look inside of here. Got the screws removed. Uh, back here, this little white thing this is an air filter. Uh, there's actually air circulates through here to keep things cool, but this filters out the junk. Um, this is the head, this is the read-write head and the disc. And uh, yeah, on the back side is the circuit board and all the stuff that makes it run. Okay, let's crank it up and watch her work. Okay, she's trying to access. Have you ever heard this noise? Like that, it's time to back up your hard disk uh, immediately. Don't do anything else, just back it up. I've seen people say, oh, no, no, I'll get back to it, I'll just go back, and the next time they turn it on, it's nothing. So, you can see it's trying to access. What this lock over here does is when there's an air current flowing fast enough, it allows the head to unlock. It parks. Parks itself on power down. Start up again. There's the seek. I keep touching it. So is it moving? Oh yeah, that kind of took care of that. So what's making all this chatter? Well, it's the head. It's actually vibrating. As it goes over the surface, you can see when I touch it, it stops. And what's interesting is there's a linear motor that, that's pulling this thing around. It's not like a stepping motor. It's just precisely tuned. You'll see it's going to try to center itself. So I can pull it offline and there's a lot of resistance. It feels like a spring, but it's just a magnet. And there's parked. I can dampen the head by touching it here, or I can use this, this is a, a lock, a head lock, and it's just a piece of plastic that goes back here, and I can just touch it this way, and it'll touch the back of that arm right there. So the arm goes back in here, has magnets on it, and they use coils to position it, mag uh, electromagnetic coils, and I can uh, quiet the screeching. As the disc goes around, that head is pulsing on and off, and it sets up vibrations that you can hear. That. So I'm just barely dampening them out. Hard drives are really sensitive to vibrations. In fact, there's been cases where uh, people mounted hard disks next to each other without any uh, padding or whatever, any uh, shock absorbing material like rubber or whatever, and they'll set up a mutual vibration and they'll start failing one after another. There's also something else about this. Um, this thing is spinning really fast. This is 7200 RPM and it acts like a gyroscope. It doesn't want to uh, move the logical way. Uh, There's another reason you shouldn't probably do this. I mean, if you get your finger on there or something, it can really hurt you. But uh, it is spinning fast. And uh, if you put enough of those platters on there, had enough mass, it would make a pretty formidable gyroscope at 7200 RPM. There's a close-up on the head right there, and that's very tiny actually. The uh, part that's reading and writing to the, to the head is very, very small. And this thing is actually floating like a hovercraft. 
and you'll see them when they take off, they're back here and they're parked up against the hub because against the hub there's no data. It's kind of like a takeoff and landing zone for the head. You don't want this thing touching the disk, a spinning disk, when, uh, where there's data. And so back in this area, back over where the tool is, there's no data and that thing uh, takes off and lands. So when the disk starts spinning, it drags air along with it, air friction drags air along with it. It piles up underneath the head because the air is going from this direction to this direction. It piles up underneath the head and it lifts the head off and it just, like a hovercraft, uh, floats along on the uh, blanket of air. And that's how that works. Now sometimes, because this is a magnetic device and the disc is magnetic and it's on a poorly designed disc, it will start bouncing up and down like a washboard effect and it will slam into the disc and it will cause a hard crash you can see microscopic pitting if you have the right kind of microscope. So uh, that's one way they crash. Watch what happens when I, bounce, when I drop this disc. See that head move? That's not a good thing. Uh, that banging can cause the head to strike the media. The disc platter and then you can have a hard crash. So this is why you're never supposed to move a hard disc around when it's uh, when it's operating, especially like in a laptop where that happens a lot, you want this disc, to, the head to be parked up against that hub. It's going to, it's going to have any impact on it. Since we have it apart, let's take it the rest of the way apart. I'll take out these torque screws and I'll get that done here in a second. I'll come back and show you where we are. Well, here's the circuit board. I've got it unscrewed and you can see here, this is a connector and it connects to here. It's just a, a pressure connector and just a bunch of contacts and this is where the data goes across and then back here are some connectors for the motor. The motor's right there and those are the contact points for those. They're just spring-loaded contacts. So that's what drives the motor and the circuit board keeps the motor at a correct speed uh, and that's uh, pretty much all there is to it. There's the ribbon cable. This is an old IDE drive and the select uh, pins and then the power cables, uh, power plug. So that's it for that.